specialty training and became a psychiatrist at RNK Mental and Neurological Diseases Training and Research Hospital. In 2013, she started working as a chief assistant in the same hospital. Mr. Uh, Ms. Alton Tash was responsible for the implementation of two projects about outpatient treatment and rehabilitation program for addiction patients, which was the first program in Turkey. In 2013, Dr. Alton Tash received the research award for Psychiatric Association of Turkey and she became an associate professor of psychiatry in 2018. She participated in the World Health Organization gambling workshop in 2019. Uh, it provides psycho, psycho education and group therapy to patients diagnosed with a gambling addiction and disorder. She is one of the project coordinators of Yeshil I TBM gambling module. Dr. Alton Tash advises on different projects related to addiction, alcohol, and substance use disorders, behavioral addiction, and family and couple therapies, as well as uh, social psychotherapy and EMDR are her field of interest. Dr. Uh, Alton Tash is currently working as an educational uh, officer and responsible for the AMATEM, which is Alcohol and Drug Addiction Center at, at Istanbul RNK Mental and Neurological Disease Training and Research Hospital. Uh, without further ado, Dr. Marie, the floor is all yours. Okay, and um, thank you for your kind presentation. Uh, hello to everybody. Today I'm very happy uh, to be here with so many precious young uh, people, young volunteers who are fighting against addiction uh, and all over the world. I send my love and greetings to everyone. Uh, I hope uh, you will benefit from my presentation. Now I want to uh, share my uh, screen now. Uh, yes, I think it's okay now. Yes. You will see the presentation now? Yes, I can see the presentation. Okay. Yes, it's okay. Okay. And yes. this, you see now full screen. Okay. Yes, uh, I can see. First. Okay. Now we can start. Uh, here's the outline of my presentation. I'm going to tell about addiction, behavioral addictions, and gambling addiction. Uh, it will be a long presentation, as you see here. Now, addiction is separated into two parts. Uh, sorry, uh, I want to make something different because um, I can see my... Uh, I need some help because I can see my screen now. You see, but I can... Uh, okay. Now, uh, addiction is separated into two parts, substance-related disorders and uh, behavioral addictions. Uh, substance-related disorders uh, were uh, discussed before me, and I will talk about gambling addiction. Uh, it's one of the uh, behavioral addictions today. And now let's look at types of behavioral addictions. Now here you see uh, the addiction tree adult addictions, healing addictions, substance addictions, and uh, as you see, they have so much in common. Now, uh, when do we say that there is a behavioral addiction? Uh, let's take a look at the common features of behavioral addictions. Uh, all of them are dealing with a certain behavior, getting away from the real world, repeating this behavior, to reveal a feeling that feels good and tolerance develops as behaviors continue, difficulty in controlling behavior. And if reputation of the behavior is prevented, there may be signs of withdrawal, such as tension or irritability. Continuously increasing in addictive behaviors, 
to call the deterioration of daily life standards. And uh, now uh, let's look at the types of the uh, behavior addictions. First, the technology addiction, as you know well. The other one is internet addiction. And the next one is game addiction or video game addiction, the same. Sex addiction. Uh, we like eating, but there's also a food addiction. Uh, in, during the outbreak, we all shop from internet, but we must know that we must be in control because there is a shopping addiction. We must, uh, we should do exercise, but we uh, must know about exercise addiction, love addiction, good addiction. Uh, and the last one is the gambling disorder. It means the same with gambling addiction. So uh, now I want to ask a question. Do you know this movie? Which movie is this? Uh, I, I don't hear all of you, but I uh, think that you say Ocean's Level. Does it look exciting? Look at the picture, look at the photograph. Uh, does it look romantic? Is it a glamorous picture? Or is it about gambling? I hear uh, you say it's, it's about gambling. Now, how many movies were made about gambling, uh, especially in Hollywood? You can find hundreds of gambling movies. Though there are so many as well. Uh, Hollywood romanticized gambling, but the reality of gambling is really different. It is dangerous if you don't control it. So, uh, gambling has dramatically increased in the last 25 years worldwide. Gambling is a universal public health problem today. It's an important problem. It affects the gamblers and those around him or her. Earning from legal gambling in the USA are in the multi-billions of dollars per year. Gambling is a giant industry in the field of entertainment and vacation. So how common is gambling behavior in the world? Uh, let's take a look at it. Although gambling is prohibited in China, Macau on the south, of co south coast of China receives 50% of the country's income from gambling. The next one, in the USA, $261 billion gambling industry has 1.8 million employees. And 80% uh, of the Australian population is gambling, any kind of gambling. About 32% of the UK's population gamble every week, not a, only a disorder or addiction, a gamble, any kind of gambling. So, uh, then let's think, why did people start talking so much about gambling nowadays? Is gambling something new or is it just noticed? Mm, it has always existed in history, but it has changed its form over time. You hear, you see the uh, pictures, the photographs, from the ancient times. It's known that in the history, it's known that there were contests of throwing spears in history and bets on wrestling or flintstones. The first dice were made from sheep and goat bone in the form of cubes. During the Renaissance, dice throwing games were very popular. Card games started in the 15th century. Today's tarot cards originated from Italian card games a few centuries ago. Card games first appeared in China and Korea and were brought to Europe by travelers and sailors. And the first casinos were found in Venice. Roman soldiers, I said, are said to bet on the spin of the wheel and invent the primitive version of the roulette. Dice, played with dice among soldiers, was a favorite game in the American Civil War. Here you see a photograph from the American Civil War. And over time, the number of casinos has increased 
and virtual internet casinos have been available since 1990s. Gambling has changed its form in history, but as you can see, it has continued its existence by adapting to the place and time. With the introduction of internet into our lives, online gambling types emerged and start to spread more every day. The speed and danger of existing problem increased even more. So, uh, what's the meaning? I will ask you, what's the meaning of gambling? Uh, what does it mean? Uh, now, uh, is there um, anyone uh, among us who has never gambled? I think there are question marks in your minds. Uh, so let's uh, continue to identify, identify the gambling. Um, first of all, the meaning of gambling. The word gambling means playing wrongly or cheating in the game, taking another risk to make a high profit. For example, the trade of it is thinking over the game, always thinking over the game, risk taking, and thrill of winning. And so uh, I talk about the types of the addictions. Uh, now I ask, is it possible for uh, anyone you become to be addicted to gambling? Uh, here you see the degrees of the gambling and let's uh, look at what are the differences between them. First of all, we usually play, uh, we usually gamble, so we are social gamblers. The purpose of this degree is only fun and socialization. The second degree is problem gambling. The purpose is escape. Escape from feelings, escape from problems, escape from reality, maybe. Uh, excitement for excitement and for joy. The person's control has decreased and cannot predict the losses. And the last one is gambling disorder means gambling addiction. The purpose is escape from all the things that I counted before for excitement, joy, but at this stage, addiction has developed. Unexpected losses usually occur and there's no control over the gambling. And uh, how people become addicted? Uh, there's a reward system in our brains and there's a hormone, dopamine, uh, also called the hormone of pleasure, is secreted from our brains. When we eat a meal we, that we love so much, uh, ten, for example, 10 units of dopamine are secreted from the brain. When we hug someone we love, then 20 units of dopamine secreted. For instance, if we fall in love, 100 units are secreted. Are, these are examples. But when the drug is used or gambled, the hormone is secreted in a much higher amount and decreases rapidly. As gambling continues, it demands the brain cell structure in the reward system. Activities we enjoy now become less interesting to us because the pleasure threshold has increased. For this reason, the person looks for activities that will give high rush, high excitement. And uh, gambling is like taking drug to the brain, the similar, the same things. The feeling of I will win created by gambling and the possibility of making a lot of money in a short time secretes the hormone of dopamine in the brain. In particular, the region that controls the person's behavior is disabled. In many online games, children deposit money. When the child, child reaches the top level in the game, dopamine rises. He plays again and again to experience the high excitement. As a result, children are experiencing these rushes uh, at a very young age. So society needs to examine this closely. Yes, 
Uh, on this slide, you'll see many different uh, types of gambling. Uh, it, then you look at it as maybe some of them are not familiar to you. Uh, and some types of gambling are prohibited in some countries. Some of them are legal, some of them are illegal in some countries, in different countries. But many of these types of gambling are common around the world. For example, playing cards, games of skill, like golf, billiards, lotto or national lottery, memorial lotto, cockfighting for money, casino games, like, as you know, slot machines, roulette, blackjack, and etc. Sports lotto, sports betting, you know, bingo, uh, dice games, or self-organized games for making money, virtual casino games, like poker, roulette, blackjack, and etc. And playing on stock exchange or forex. Now, uh, I am talking about addiction. So how do we know if a person addicted to gambling? What are the signs of addiction? Uh, now, take attention. I will give you uh, nine signs to know if a person is addicted or not. If at least uh, four signs are shown within a year, we can diagnose that the person has a gambling addiction. Yes, first, needs to gamble with increasing amounts of money in order to achieve the desired excitement. Two, is restless or irritable when attempting to cut down or stamp gambling. Has made repeated unsuccessful efforts to control, cut back, or stop gambling. Four, is often preoccupied with gambling, having persistent thoughts of relieving past gambling experiences, handicapping, or planning the next venture, thinking of ways to get money which, uh, with which to gamble. Now, five, often gambles when feeling distressed, helpless, guilty, anxious, depressed, use it as a coping strategy, as you see. After losing money, gambling often returns another day to get even, chasing once loses. Seven, lies to conceal the extent of involvement with gambling and has jeopardized or lost a significant relationship, job, or educational or career opportunity because of gambling. The last one relies on others to provide money or to relieve desperate financial situations caused by gambling. Now, and now uh, we can uh, talk about the prevalence, the frequency of gambling. Uh, the prevalence in general population is one to 5%, but among university students, it's 8%. In adolescents, it can reach to 12. Uh, 60 to 80% of the youth gamble for money, and uh, 10 to 15% of them are risky in terms of gambling disorder. This is important. The prevalence of pathological gambling has increased over the past two decades, particularly in the following groups. The poor, adolescents and young adults, seniors, women, prisoners also, and the prevalence of gambling disorder among young people is higher than that of adults due to the rise of technology we know. And uh, young thing is a hidden addiction. It's necessary to strive to detect and treat. Only 10 to 20 percent of those with gambling disorders seek professional help. These people often come not with the problem of gambling, but with the negative consequences of gambling. They are brought for uh, reasons such as 
family and couple therapy, couple problems, sorry, parenting problems, depression, and also suicide, workplace issues. And uh, you can ask that, is there any single reason of the gambling addiction? No, there's no single reason. It occurs for biopsychosocial reasons, biopsychosocial reasons. The effect of all genetic, familial, environmental, and social reasons are mentioned. For example, if there is an immediate family member who has a gambling action, this can affect other family members also. Um, why is online gambling more dangerous than other types? Well, gambling is dangerous, but online gambling is more dangerous than other types. Online gambling is more risky because it's much more addictive, because it's easy to reach. It's very easy to do is with smartphones today, as you know, the person does not have his online own name uh, on websites. Nicknames can be used. There is often no age limit, and it's easier to spend money online. So there are some uh, personality characteristics of the people who gamble. Now let's look at them. A competitive and self-confident and optimistic. They usually cannot express their feelings easily. Sometimes they need help. Believe that they always know the score in gambling and in life. In adolescence, in, when they are in adolescent times, there's that intense dealing with betting. The desire for action is at the central lifestyle. And they have a rationalization that they must be where the action is. They prefer small rewards in the near future to large rewards in the future. And they, are, they have a usually a magical thinking and they um, have high risk-taking behaviors, lying and disrupted relationships, and also there's a, an important thing, bailout, they really on others to pay their debts. And um, we can talk about the comorbid disease in gambling addiction. It, it means that uh, what other diseases are attributed to gambling, because gamblers really go for help on their own, and usually it takes the, uh, they usually take the insistence of their families, uh, uh, generally. Uh, now let's look at uh, these uh, comorbid um, psychiatric uh, issues, psychiatric disorders. Uh, first, alcohol and substance use disorders. Second, impulse control disorders, mood disorders, personality disorders, anxiety disorders, eating disorders, psychosomatic disorders, and with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, we say, and depressive disorders also. It's an important slide. I think approximately half of the individuals in treatment for gambling disorder have suicidal thoughts and 17% attempt suicide. And uh, almost 50% of gamblers receive treatment for mental disorders, any mental disorders. Anyway, and there is a coexistence with other addictions also. Gambling addiction is also connected with all other addictions. Gambling disorder and substance use disorder, they are together. And the, per, uh, it's the percentage is uh, 57, we can say. And the risk of gambling disorder increases three times in substance use disorder. In the presence of gambling disorder, the risk of alcohol use disorder increases four times. And so 
Uh, are there any risk factors in gambling addiction? Uh, yes, there are some risk factors that we can uh, count. For example, being a man and low socioeconomic status, uh, impulsivity, alcohol and substance use, anxiety, depression, and, and some psychological problems. Uh, starting gambling at a young age, it's, it's a big risk. Incompatible coping strategies, a poor academic performance in school, a parents' problematical, problematic gambling, inconsistent parental attitude, family problems, or maybe couple problems, a marketing of gambling, normalization of gambling sometimes, uh, gambling is accessible, uh, risk allowing personality traits, and people who are in search of innovation. Uh, low, risk, low risk perception in the adolescent period, facilitating access to legal and illegal gambling games, including those played over the internet as that encourage gambling. Gambling games operated by various government agencies and increased availability of money resources, especially for children, peer influence and the presence of gamblers in the family. With these features displayed, people can be addicted more easily. There is a cycle of gambling, it's, it's, it's like a, a, a addiction. Uh, cycle. So, can gambling addiction be treated? It's an important question. Uh, gambling addiction is a chronic brain disease and that goes with relapses and that can be treated. And what treatment methods do we use? We use drug treatments in hospital or in outpatient clinics. We use psychotherapies also, some special psychotherapies, uh, individual psychotherapies, maybe group psychotherapies for gamblers and a family and couple therapies. And during the treatments, uh, family is, a very import, very, is very instrumental in helping the gamblers to cope with their diseases. We can help the gamblers if they have, uh, they don't bring their families or their wives or uh, etc. And the other um, way uh, is to be uh, in the gambler's enemies. So the future of gambling. Gambling can lead to a serious public health crisis in the world of precaution. And in the world, if precautions are not taken, therefore impressive measures should be taken. Society awareness should be increased and effective treatment programs should be created. So uh, I think it's a um, summary of the consequences uh, of problematic gambling or gambling disorder. So you see the uh, consequences, family issues, psychological problems, judicial or forensic issues, and poor quality of life workplace issues or uh, sometimes uh, school issues, suicide attempts, suicide thoughts and, uh, and suicide attempts and financial issues. I think this is the summary of uh, the uh, consequence of uh, gambling. So, conclusion. Gambling should be studied from a young age into adulthood by society. Gambling can destroy the individual their families, their business life, and cause damage in the society. And lastly, uh, I want to tell uh, all of you how proud I'm of you. As volunteers, uh, you have dedicated your time uh, to care about others. Volunteers are the leaders in our society and gives me hope for our future. You make a difference. And uh, I think it's very important to all of us 
So, uh, and I want to thank you for caring and being leaders. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Marie, for your uh, valuable inputs and very productive presentation. And as you mentioned, many uh, research fun fundings have shown that gambling became a very popular activity among adolescents and youth and pointed out that the emergence of new forms of gambling, especially within the development of uh, internet, TVs, and, um, uh, and uh, other social media tools, therefore research on the phenomena and raising social awareness about it is a very significant mechanism toward uh, more resilient and conscious societies and uh, youth. Now I would like to open the floor for the question but I will start with the written one. Uh, one of the participants is asking, what can we do if there is someone in the family or among our friends uh, who we think is risky for gambling? Ah, okay. Uh, thank you for this uh, good question. Um, if there is someone um, in the family or among your friends, your environment, um, first of all, um, I can say you can speak uh, uh, with him or with her uh, because you know addiction, gambling addiction today, and you can uh, encourage him to go to a clinic or to go to a hospital uh, for help. Uh, but uh, if he doesn't accept, maybe sometimes we see frequently uh, he, he will not accept, then you can uh, speak. Uh, with the family uh, to encourage him to uh, family, tell, family. Uh, to family. tell, to tell uh, the uh, um, problem uh, because if uh, he's an uh, addicted person, he needs professional help. We can tell something, we can encourage, but uh, the result uh, must be a professional help. Thank you, Hatam. And uh, now we will take a question from Maryam yes. from Oman. Okay. Uh, hello. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. I am not sure of uh, how I should state this uh, question because it's a bit related to it's it's related to psychology, but at the same time, it's related to um, other type of uh, patients. So, uh, you know, some patients of uh, other diseases might um, experience some psychological disorder, like for example, people who are experiencing uh, or diagnosed with Hashimoto thyroiditis or hypothyroid. Mm -hmm. So uh, I have noticed from the previous speaker that uh, some of the um, um, addiction symptoms or uh, some of the um, psychological disorder that is caused by addiction is actually similar to the to some of the um, psychological disorder for those people who are you know experiencing with other diseases so uh, I'm not sure of uh, if we can implement or um, find a way of um, facing or solving this kind of um, issue with uh, uh, with those patients thank you uh, and I, I understand from your question that you uh, learned something from uh, the, um, the other presenta uh, presentation that I think she wanted to say uh, um, addiction is a, uh, is a disorder, uh, is a yes. disease, disease uh, as gambling disorder also. Uh, we can think that they are um, similar. Maybe you can have a diabetes or hypertension so you, so you go to a clinic or to a, a doctor to get treatment. So we can think that addiction is also a, a disease. So we must get a pharmacotherapy and the other therapies. Uh, it means that if, if you think that it's, it's only, um, it's, it's not a different um, thing. It is also in a part of medicine. Uh, we are doctors and we are treating uh, diseases, disorders. And if you have diabetes, uh, you go for treatment. If you have an addiction, you can come for the treatment. It's, it's similar. I think I, I, I understood that the um, presentation was about this. Okay. 
Thank you, Hojam. And uh, now I will take another recent question. Uh, does being a gambler in the family increase the risk? Oh, yes. Um, if you have an uh, immediate family, uh, maybe a first degree relative uh, who has had a gambling addiction or problematic gambler, uh, then uh, you, you are in the risk being a, a gambler or gambling uh, disorder because of uh, genetics and because of social learning theory, because the, the ch uh, child uh, um, see everything in the family. And if the father uh, gambles and, and it's, it's normal to gamble in the family, then the child learns it and experiences it and likes it. And as I told you, uh, um, he's um, trying to get the um, dopamine uh, continuously. So uh, it's a high risk if you have a relative, a close a relative in your family, or, or uh, especially um, it's similar that if you have a friend also, close friend who gambles or ga has a gambling disorder, also a problematic, a problematic issue uh, for you, same thing. But it, it, the genetic is also more important, family. Thank you, Hajam. Uh, another question from Zoya Khaled from Pakistan. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am, for productive session. And I have a question. Zoya, we cannot hear you. Zoya? Let me move to Abdul Latif Lawal from Nigeria, then I will go back to Zoya Khaled. Abdul Latif, you have the floor. Yeah, uh, thank you. And so after yesterday's section, I uh, had some discussion with a uh, few of my friends uh, that um, we need to work on this um, uh, uh, gambling addiction. So uh, we discussed with some people, some group, few group of friends, and one of them, or two of them told us that um, there is two options for them. It is either gambling kills them or they will kill gambling, but there is no quitting. They are not ready to quit. Like it is either they are killed by gambling or gambling killed them. So how can we work on changing these people mentality? Considering a country like us where we don't have um, a specialist that, uh, that are working on um, uh, maybe uh, a specialist on uh, gambling that will give advice on gambling. Even if there are, they need to be in the in the tops in the big big cities. So, considering we that we are not in the in, in the big big cities, how do we encourage these people to stop? When the whole national um, TV um, uh, three out of five adverts are advertising betting game, uh, like online betting game, how do we how do we change this? How do we reduce this mentality, especially in, in, within our group of friends that we mm -hmm. discuss with? And some of them, we are like, it is either they are killed by gambling or they will kill gambling. Hujam, did you get the question? Like, um, uh, can, can you summarize it? Please? OK, uh, he is because asking. There's a voice problem. I, I couldn't hear. Uh, uh, only a little summary. Okay, he is asking how can we change the mentalities, especially of people who are gambling uh, in the cities and countries where there are no NGOs or this program of awareness. Is it right, Abdul Latif? I try to summarize your question. Yes, uh, that is a quite a summary of it, yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Um, uh, I think uh, there is not only one area to stop or um, to change the mentalization. Uh, for example, it begins in schools. Uh, you must tell the gambling or uh, the problem of gambling to the students when they are in primary school uh, and they must, um, people must talk with uh, their children in the family and in high school. And also it's very important in universities. Also government can do uh, some boundaries uh, some uh, legal uh, implementations uh, to stop or control it. Uh, yeah, as I told you, gambling, it is controlled, not bad. It's, it, it's only for socialization. 
And but if you uh, pass the boundary, pass the limit, then it becomes uh, dangerous. So uh, it begins from childhood and uh, in when they are teenagers. Uh, and and um, I think family and government implementation is the most important things that we can do to, to change. Thank you, Hodam. Now I will take a written question. Uh, in what condition do patients usually come to you? Are they addicted? Are they depressed? Uh, with what kind of issues or results do they apply to you? Uh, okay. Is, yes, uh, if, uh, to, my, uh, to the clinics, yes. Uh, when, the, when people uh, come to the hospital and to, when they come to the uh, addiction clinics, uh, we see that uh, usually the addiction is obvious. It, it has been occurred uh, a few time ago. Uh, and they, uh, they don't come alone. They generally come with their families. Uh, for example, the wife says that I will divorce if you don't stop gambling. Uh, that this is a motivation for uh, this man. Uh, so we see that um, they are they have gambling addiction, and also the, we usually see the consequences, but consequences of the addiction. For example, they feel uh, anxious, they they um, have anxiety, depression, suicide thoughts. We usually uh, hear suicide thoughts, and uh, we um, get them to the hospital for treatment. Uh, they have um, social problems, uh, they have economical problems, uh, some forensic problems. Sometimes uh, we, um, we must treat them for, the, uh, for uh, forensic issues. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I rarely see that a man comes to the clinic that I'm, uh, I have a gambling disorder. It's so rare. Uh, but uh, usually the um, bad consequences of it. Uh, it it's uh, sometimes too late, uh, but uh, we, we begin to trade uh, and uh, do the best, uh, what can we do for him? Thank you. Uh, now we, ha we will have a question from Mohammed Mubras from Sri Lanka. And I would like to ask Zoya Khaled from Pakistan to send me her question in the chat box. Mohammed, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm Mohammed Nibras from Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. Under COVID-19, many human activities are suspended. Public entertainment places are closed down. Uh, football legends are almost fully cut off. Uh, they call fully fully cut off uh, worldwide. The target for gambler to bet are less and less. No matter football horse racing, boxing, bar, etc. My question is, how do the psychiatrists addictive gambler coping with their addiction under COVID-19? In psychiatry, psychotherapy or behavioral modification is always used. Uh, is COVID-19 helping this addictive gambler to run out their obsession? Thank you. Let me summarize the question, Hoja. Yes, yes, please. He is asking uh, how this uh, COVID-19 and this health challenges uh, are affecting the people who are gambling. Ah, okay. Uh, in uh, COVID-19, uh, we phoned to our um, patients and we asked that, how are you? Uh, because they couldn't come to the hospital, couldn't come to uh, patient uh, clinics. Uh, and they said that, uh, it was uh, not easy for us to be away from uh, gambling, but um, it was a treatment period for them because they couldn't go out. Uh, if they are um, gambling, uh, out of internet. But mm -hmm. if they are um, the gamblers uh, of internet, it was bad for them. Because they were with families, it was a control mechanism to be with families also in the same home, in the same house. But there was a lot of time to spend, uh, and they uh, spend a lot of money uh, by uh, playing in, um, uh, yeah, by gambling uh, and betting. 
uh, on internet uh, until they uh, lose a lot of money. Uh, it was uh, good for the gamblers who doesn't play internet and bad for the uh, patients who play uh, in the internet. Thank you, Hujam. Uh, the question from Zoya uh, is written now. I will read it. How to prevent a gambling addiction and how to help someone with a gambling problem? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, is this a child or an adult? She is uh, not. It's my question. <laughs> yes. Child? She is asking in general. In general, yes. Yes. Uh, uh, from the beginning, everyone in public must be aware of the um, consequences. Uh, first, we must, you can, yes, you can gamble, but you must learn how to control it. Uh, especially um, the mothers and fathers must um, uh, control their children. For example, they are on the internet and he must go and see and ask what is he doing on the internet playing games or gambling or chatting with anyone he, who doesn't know. And uh, so family control and schools must um, tell a lot of things, some uh, conferences uh, or um, some activities about gambling. Also, if you want to prevent uh, gambling, uh, you must put different uh, positive alternative behaviors uh, um, uh, to replace them, okay? If, if uh, for example, I say my patient that you must not uh, gamble, uh, please control yourself and etc. I give treatment, drug and uh, therapies, etc. So he asked me, what will I do in the uh, times that I gamble? So he yeah. must find some new and some uh, positive uh, activities uh, to re replace it. So maybe sports, maybe um, writing, reading, and etc. What he loves. It's important that he must find what he wants. I, I, I can't say that you must read. If he doesn't like it, he can't do it. So we help and encourage them to find some new ways to get excitement, to get rush as for, for the dopamine that we have inside. It means that we have always to find other alternatives for yes. these addicted people. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Hojam. Last question will be from Bishank Paksoy. She is from Turkey. Bishank, you have the floor. From Turkey? Oh. Yes, she's from yes. Turkey. Bishank, can you can you hear me? Okay, I think Bishank is not with us. Uh, unfortunately, maybe she can ask can her you question. Hear me now? Okay, I can hear you. Please proceed. Thank you. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for this uh, online training and for your time. Meri uh, Hoja. Can I call you Meri Hoja? Okay, my question is about uh, did you have any increase in the patients that come and consult you or, you know, uh, Green Crescent that came with online gambling? Was it for uh, young people? I mean, were they young people or mostly adults or in uh, gender? Was it uh, depending on the gender also? For example, maybe more the men was uh, they were gambling or women or uh, what kind of uh, alternatives or what kind of things that you could tell them, for example, to leave it or to rehabilitate them? Or did you have any research on it? I was yeah. wondering ab about it, especially in COVID uh, period. Did you yeah. face something like this? Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for your uh, good question. Uh, also, um, the um, we um, plan the treatment according to uh, the uh, types of sometimes uh, types of the gambling. For example, it's online gambling. Then we make a, a treatment plan according to it. If, if it's a, a gambling, maybe a lotto or, or something playing cards, we make a different uh, treatment uh, and therapy plan for it. Uh, we usually um, see uh, the men in clinics. Also, I have uh, male patients, women patients. 
uh, but they are uh, rarer uh, than uh, the men. Uh, if, uh, for example, I want to give an example what we do, uh, which uh, difference, uh, what are the differences for the treatment between them. If uh, he's an online uh, gambler, uh, then I first we um, say that you must be away from internet. It's it's sure uh, we know it. Uh, so how will I do it today? I I use I'm using WhatsApp messages and other things with internet. So uh, you must get a new uh, phone number and you must be away from your friends who gambles and the other gambler uh, the other gamblers that they sometimes. Um, be together, uh, they um, they have a, a little um, contact with internet, uh, and uh, if he's a child or an uh, um, or teenage, then we uh, need the help of the family, and we say, for example, we say to the mother that uh, give enough money uh, only for bus or for food. Uh, not much money, money because if you give much money, he plays, he uh, gambles, and uh, if he's an uh, um, adult, then uh, I can say to her, his wife, that uh, you must take the control of money, bank cards, and others. If he needs something, you can give enough. Uh, so uh, the treatment plan depends on the type of the uh, gambling. Uh, and the um, person and uh, characteristics of person, as I accounted in my presentation, uh, risks uh, when he needs to play, when he uh, needs to uh, go out and uh, play, uh, and when when does he uh, feel craving? Uh, we said craving. He wants to play. We can stop. We uh, and he can stop himself. So sometimes we can't stop, and uh, we. Um, for example, we want him to write the times of craving, uh, craving. And for example, at nine o'clock, then you can um, make a new um, activity at nine o'clock with your family. Or uh, he thinks that I feel uh, bad uh, at uh, in in uh, in the morning. Then we can uh, find something to do in mornings and something etc. It. We don't have only um, one uh, model. We can change the model according to the patient, according to the issue statement. Okay. Thank you, Hojam. I think we came to the end of the lecture. I would like to thank our distinguished speaker, uh, Dr. Marih Altantash, for the wonderful lecture. It was a very nice learning experience with you, Hojam. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. See you. Also, also, we are very grateful to the Green Crescent experts, mentors, and doctors. Uh, without their valuable contributions and expertise, the program would not be successfully uh, implemented. And dear participants, the next session will be the next and the last session will be after five minutes with my colleague, Mr. Idi Ahmed. I wish you a good and fruitful lecture. Thank you so much, and see you in other ICYF opportunities and programs. Assalamu